Weird question today, can we substitute paper for clay projects? Let's find out. Hey class, welcome back. Another day, another project. Mr. G here, guys. We're going over the, another project where we're substituting paper for clay. Now, most of us are still in a virtual landscape. I'm still teaching virtually, so I gotta come up with every project for the virtual learner. So keeping that in mind, I'm wanting to do another ceramic clay project because I'm teaching ceramics right now. And because of that, I want to incorporate paper for my students who are working at home, which is pretty much my class. So diving into this, one of the things I started thinking about that I've done in paper time and time again is these paper, these paper sticks where we, we're taking a magazine, piece of a magazine, rolling it up, making that paper coil, and then we're gonna turn this into a full on, and we're gonna use this to turn out a 3D portrait. So this was the project that I made using just the, these uh, paper sticks here. Uh, I have a piece of mat board they use as a backing, but you could just use cardboard just the same. Works out perfectly well. Let's dive into that process. Just number one, you gotta have a sketch for your design. Why? Because as we're making stuff in art class in general, we always need a sketch to work as a reference tool. Now we are going to change that from the original design 99% of the time, but for this one, we definitely need to have that sketch laid out so we can put that down. Now, after I've gotten the sketch, I've laid it down on that piece of cardboard and I'm using a sharpie to really bring out the line why because as you start putting those pieces in place those uh these things the stick pieces and the reason that we're using that sharpie is so that when we can lay down our stick pieces we can easily see where those things are supposed to go in our design you're you're just going to have that thing it's going to get lost sometime during while you're putting these pieces down now for this i'm just using just regular white glue you could use hot glue as well just be cautious because you could burn yourself as I'm doing this, I'm laying down the sections, I'm measuring it first, and then cutting the piece to fit to the line using a pair of scissors. Now, because this is a just a regular piece of magazine that I'm just snipping, uh, scissors cut through it just fine. You don't have to use an X-Acto knife. Uh, I'd actually recommend not using the X-Acto knife just because I don't want it to slip and injure you, which could happen, and you gotta be cautious. As I'm laying these pieces down, doing it semi-methodically, where I'm just trying to outline the structure of the piece. Now, the first thing is I told my students is you're outlining your subject matter first. The reason we're outlining it is so that we have a, a space for between the positive space and the negative space. The positive space is the line that we're using. The negative space is what is the open, empty area that's left in between. And for that, we're going to be using uh, filler pieces to fill those sections in. Now for this, because those tubes are just a certain amount of thickness, I'm actually using them because you can see that the travel design that I'm working from has a nice outline that is just a thick black design. So the drawing is using a lot of positive space. Now looking at how I used the chopstick there, again, I'm, I prefer using the chopsticks to pencils when I'm rolling the paper tubes is because the chopstick has that raw wood exterior which has not got paint on it or anything which is gonna be a little slicker to rolling the magazine pieces so it's got a little bit of tooth something to grab onto so I prefer using it just a little bit of glue when you start a little bit of glue at the end when you're finished and that's it you don't need to sop it down with a bunch of glue in between uh, do these first I have my students make about a hundred pieces and it sounds like a lot but you go through those pieces relatively quickly uh, for this project I think at the end of the day I was using about six so using that positive space as the outline of the structure, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all those sections with the single tube, the single tube material to fi fill out this project. So once I've laid out the entire structure onto my mat board. I've laid out all those pieces, filling in those different spaces. I've gotta come up with, what am I gonna use to fill in the negative spaces with? How are we gonna show a rich, like polar bear fur inside of the piece? So I'm trying to think of that while I'm building this out, while I'm using the rest of the, these designs. It dawns on me, what if I cut these really super thin on the bias, which means slightly at an angle. Uh, if you're into cooking, the bias is where you cut it at that angle, if I had like, if I had two or three scallions that we're about to chop down and put as a nice, wonderful garnish at the end of our piece, I'm gonna cut those just on the diagonal just a little bit, and I'm just gonna take those, take that down the rest of the stock. Try and make those things as close together as possible. I was noticing that as I started building these pieces in, that if they were more spaced out, then the, or they were thicker, the, the height difference 
completely throws off the effect of the fur design, the fur texture that I wanted to establish in the piece. Now this patterning using those stock pieces like I'm using, uh, I mean using those would also work for like a fish scale. Anything that's gonna have like a scale texture to it would be definitively that would work great uh for me the way that i'm having to shift them back and forth a little bit does play to uh looks a little more like fur when you paint over it and i thought that was a really nice effect um just keep playing around with it and coming up with different ways to chop uh those paper two pieces to get the effect that you're trying to go for not everything's going to work out sometimes it's a trial and error thing i will say this i had students who they started doing it one day realized like we were looking at the on day two or day three and we're like this needs to be changed because it's just not coming out the way that you want so we're taking a palette scraper uh, a paint scraper and we're scraping off sections of it which really sounds bad but at the end of the day the kid came out with a better piece i'm always going to support having a better piece taking a bill a little bit longer than let's just get it done just to grade it and just be done with it because that's not really going to be impactful for a good, well-rounded art experience. I do want you guys to have a good experience. Well, as one, if you're in my class, two, if you guys are watching these videos and you guys are wanting to make the best piece possible, I would always push you into experiment, try these things out. Don't just do something and hope that it comes out good. Put a little forethought into it. If it's not going the way that you want, stop, recalculate, figure out what needs to be done. Again, if you guys have questions, I tell you guys that there's something in the comments. I'm always answering those. Um, when, I, when they pop in, I answer the question, so feel free to hit me up. So at this stage of the design, I'm really just focusing on filling in the rest of the space, the empty, the negative space there with those fur pieces. Again, I wanna try and put them in a certain type of pattern so that I can create the fur-like structure that I wanna see in my design. So definitely around the chin area, I wanna have the pieces more open. So I kinda of see through them a little bit because that's gonna give me a better light colored fur. I want to switch some more on their side to give me more of the darker colored fur that's going to give me more of a shadow effect when i spray paint over this uh, i'm still in debate if i want to go back and add take nail polish i'm a big fan of using nail polish on these pieces to just give a little bit of color added to it and i have that nice fine brush so i can get in there and just do fine little bits of detail uh, but it all works out the same make sure that as you guys are doing glue and putting the glue down there put enough glue to ensure that you've covered the entire space that's available uh you you can always add more glue to it but it's, if it's not got enough glue those pieces could dry flake off and the next day you're just doing double the work because you didn't have enough adhesive there to start with so as you guys are putting these things together uh take your time method methodically think out where these things should be and always your piece should come out just well
Now, as I started finishing up the piece, I want to take a look, some glue, use the glue around the outside edge of the teeth, the mouth, and the nose area, it's also the ear up there, to give me a little bit of a space between when the glue dries. Now I have a definitive space of where I'm going to ink and where I'm going to put some paint in there to finish out the rest of the design. Now, because of how my room is set up right now, getting the paint was not really an option, so I just grabbed a bottle of black ink, nice big fat brush, and I'm just laying in the ink for the mouth so i can get that inside internal cavity of the mouth nice and dark the eye the nose and the ear those are the ones where i wanted to do it now after that i started thinking i have this blank space on the exterior of the piece how am i going to really bring the character out so throwing some rich black lines around the character and bringing those completely out and letting them fade off into the distance that was going to give me the kind of stroke of space change that i wanted to see and that kind of followed finished up the rest of the design Awesome guys, I hope that you guys got something fun out of this activity. Again, just wrapping up from there, these pieces are not hard to make and it's just another way that we can incorporate really cheap materials, make a really cool piece that just comes out really well and gives another sense of accomplishment and something else to create. And I, again, I'm just trying to come up with some different stuff, keep things fresh, keep things interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up our class as we always do. Don't forget to take care of the basics, which are to, to like, subscribe, and share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers as soon as possible. We want to try and spread the message of learning as much as possible. Don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, you throw something down there, I'm going to answer you guys. That's, that's this communication, big on that. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, I'm, I'm going to go work on some more stuff, but I'll catch you guys later. See you guys.